The state of basketball has changed so drastically. If you feel confused about the role of power forwards, you're not alone. Today, I'm going to explain how to play power forward in basketball. I'm Coach Charlie with Attack Basketball Academy. As a premier basketball development coach, I've trained thousands of players around the world on the mental and physical skills needed to dominate on the court, no matter what the position. So in this video today, I'm going to tell you what you ought to know about the role of a power forward. Next, I'm going to tell you the five skills all coaches look for when selecting a power forward. Last, I'm going to show you how to play power forward like LeBron James every game. And on top of that, I have a bonus I'll give to you, but only if you stick around to the very end. Let's get right into what you ought to know about the role of a power forward. A power forward in basketball, we call that the four position, okay? You have a, a point guard, that's the guard who, uh, who, the player who would have the ball probably in their hands the majority of the time, that position. You have the point guard, that's the number one, right? Um, using my thumb to say number one, right? You have the two guard, that's the shooting guard. That's probably your most versatile player on the perimeter uh, as far as what they may be able to do on the court, probably shoot, handle the basketball, make plays for you and your teammates. That's the two position, right? You have the three position, which you call the small forward. This is the player that can kind of go inside and outside, okay? They can play the finesse game, small game, play on a perimeter like a one and two. They also can probably play the four and five position on the inside, okay? Uh, the actual four is the power forward, okay? So the player, the power forward pretty, pretty much is, is they're a little bit more agile than your five position, which you call the center. The center typically sometimes will play with their back to the basket. Um, they are your bruisers, so to speak, maybe big uh, intimidators, uh, rim protectors defensively, may not block a lot of shots, but deter a lot of shots. They put fear in people's heart because they may be tall, big, right? Uh, the power four is more of a, 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 a finesse position in a sense of it would do everything that the center would do, but the power four will also be able to probably knock down more consistently mid-range jump shots, okay? Uh, so that role of a power four has expanded, as I talked about earlier, but I wanted to make sure that you were kind of aware. The power four is the four position, right? And they're not the center, that typically would play with their back to the basket. Probably the center would have little to no ball handle responsibility other than making a pass or a bounce pass or a handoff on a screen, pick and roll situation. A power forward might have a little bit more handle uh, responsibility as far as taking the ball out, fast breaks, uh, probably handling the basketball top of the key, uh, being able to dribble into a move. So there's a little more leeway a power forward will have uh, over a center. So I just want to make sure you had a good understanding of what a power forward is and what number we call them, they're number four. Before I tell you the five skills all coaches look for when selecting a power forward, I noticed that you're not a subscriber. I develop premium basketball players and we have a lot of information on this channel. I roll out 20 new high quality videos every month to help you, so you may want to be a subscriber. Click the subscribe button. Now let me tell you the five skills all coaches look for when selecting a power forward. First, a strong rebounder on offense and defense that can secure the ball. It's one thing to go after it, it's another thing to protect it and come down with it. So as a four, they look for strong rebounders. Just like the five, you may be expecting to rebound. I'll give you a heads up. The, the people that typically stay back on offensive rebounds are the four and the five because they are they may be the closest to that shot attempt if they didn't take it that came from the outside perimeter they're the closest so you may have your one two and three get back instead of crashing it actually help on offense rebounds because your power four and your center are going after rebounds okay give me a heads up on that they also are enforcers of the on defense right right alongside your Center, your four is an enforcer because, again, they're going to have probably slight more room of range 
that probably goes far as far as say uh, the top of the key uh, defensively. If there's a four out there that can shoot the basketball a little bit, uh, all the way down to the block and sometimes to the wing area, right? Where you have your guards at, your point guard, your shooting guard, and small forward. Okay, so. But they are also enforcers, right? So you're, they're actually they're probably bang and bruise up a little bit. So you got to make sure you, you are in good shape to play power forward in that position to understand how to become an enforcer on defense. Number three, the ability to shoot and make 12 to 15 jump shots consistently, right? You got to be able to make that free throw line type shot 13.5 feet away to be exact. You got to be able to knock that, that, that shot down consistently, okay? Because think about it. Taking the ball out on transition fast breaks, you may want your big, the five, rim running right down the middle of the court. The four takes the ball out. The four probably is going to be the person to handle the ball. And if you're wide open, you may have the range to probably shoot a 12 to 15 foot jump shot consistently and make it, right? They're also looking for sparks, right? Must be a person, a player that can make big plays for your team, especially when you're talking about keeping shots that may be missed alive. Sometimes your four position, I call them the high percentage finisher. What does that mean? Well, they will, they might keep the play alive. Shot went up, five may be occupied with another five that may be seven foot tall, right? And now you have your power four that's keeping the play alive on tips. All of a sudden, a bad shot that was 10% becomes a 80% shot and a 100% shot because your power forward was down there keeping the play alive. Defensively, the same thing. Not only the enforcer, right, but they're making sure that they're protecting that rim as well. They're helping you not get beat on backdoor cuts. They're helping you not get beat on uh, pick and rolls, okay? And then five, physical conditioning. All of what I mentioned one through four, you got to be in shape, right? You must be in tremendous shape to rebound, play physical defense, and offense and run the floor. Now that you know the five skills every coach looks for in a power forward, I want you to comment below with one skill you're going to start working on this week. Go ahead, let us know what are you going to focus on in the comments below. Now I'm going to show you how to play power forward like LeBron James every game. See, the lines now in basketball are blurred. Even when it comes down to youth basketball, you may have a player that's just as tall at 6'8", 6'9", 6'10", but guess what? That role of the power forward has also expanded. So now they are looking to not only play on the interior, but also they're, actually, they're looking to play on the perimeter, bringing the ball up the court. Basketball now is like positionless, right? So to understand that, I want to show you a couple of things that you want to look to do in this positionless basketball game that's being developed. If you are playing power forward now, how you can look to take charge of your game and also expand your game, right? I talked, I talked a great deal about that four roll, right? Being able to knock down a 12 to 15 foot shot, right? Stepping up, putting the ball in the hole, uh, you know, coming down the court. You may have the responsibility of taking the ball out on a fast break. You may have your one wanting the ball from you. Your two uh, is running the right side wing. Your three is running the left side wing. Your five came down the middle of the court, right, to rim run, best place to post up. You took the ball out as the four. You are the trail guy, right? And now think about it real quick. I want to explain this to you, right? My feet may be cut off the, the hoop. Maybe cut off, but you may see that ball go through the hoop. You're coming down the middle. You may be required to take that shot and knock down that three. Okay? Right? That's now a dangerous team. Right? That has a power forward that has guard type skills. And also when they run out on you, you don't, you don't mind putting the ball on the ground. Right? And knocking down shots. You can make plays for yourself now and your teammates. Right? Even as a power forward position. Now, just think about that's going to expand your game now because they got to play you tighter. Now you understand how to get off the ball if you don't want to handle the ball too much. It's not necessarily about all that. I can now get off the ball. I can go set a screen. Instead of me rolling, which I can do, guess what? My game's expanded. 
I can set the screen, I can pop and do what? Pop that shot again. I can pop that shot again, right? Right, that's why it's called positionless because now, you know, it's like a hybrid. That, that four position is what that uh, player, you know, great Dirk Nowinski, he was a four. He really didn't play center. He was a four, and he was seven foot tall, right? Um, LeBron, you know, big body, right? You know, he can shoot it. He can attack you. Now it's talking about power game, right? Second best, place, second best place to post up outside of the right in front of the rim is the first hash above the block, right? Now big body, closed off, learn how to crab dribble. You got size on somebody, learn how to come in, score the basketball, right? Left hand, same thing, right? Being Amy Dexter's working on your game, coming in right hand, right? Got a little game. A little finesse game, showing some footwork, stepping through, going up, finishing, right? Now you've elevated your game because you took charge of your game. Now you understand the importance of this position, this basketball round, but still at the four position, that doesn't mean that you can't shoot the three at a high level, shoot the mid-range shots at a high level, and then finish like the beast you are as a power four. Let's keep the momentum going with the bonus I mentioned earlier. We covered a lot in this video, and I want to make sure I'm really helping you out. So I would like to offer you a free guide that covers all the must-know basketball principles and in what situation to apply them. This is a powerful guide of best practice tips and skills empowering you to take charge of your game. Just click the link in the description below, and you can download the guide I put together as my gift to you. Enjoy it and keep attacking.